What's going on guys, man? Welcome back or to the channel, man. It's your boy J4. We are finally back with another video, man. Thank you guys for coming through today. If you remember a while back, I did a Q&A. Somebody asked, when was I getting power steps on the truck? And I told you guys that I would be getting power steps whenever my wife get pregnant. And guess what? She's not pregnant, but we still getting power steps anyway. But these are the Boost Auto Luma Steps M2s. Man, these things looks phenomenal, man. I do think these are gonna be a great addition to the truck. It's gonna look so good at night, particular, and I can't wait to get them on. So we're about to go ahead and do an install. I'm gonna show you guys how to install this, and we're gonna talk about how they look, how they function, and everything else. So shouts out to my guys at Boost Auto Parts, man. This is like the perfect birthday gift. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. We'll go ahead and go with everything they sent in the package. So this is the package that it came in. And then obviously this is your steps. I really gotta do this install as fast as possible, kinda sorta, cause I got something I gotta do. And I don't wanna be doing this on my birthday. All right, so this is everything that came with it. So we got our rear bracket here. This is our driving side bracket. Obviously you can tell cause it got the motor right here on the side and then the harness wire. So. We're gonna start with the driver's side, then work our way to the passenger side. Here is the passenger side. It tells you it got rear right here on this side, on each of the rear brackets. So in the rear bracket, they can go on either side really, so it don't really matter. But for the driver's side and the passenger side, you have a certain, it tells you which side is which. So you have to make sure you set it on certain sides. So that's one thing to take note of. All right, so first thing first, we're gonna go ahead and install these brackets. And I'm gonna show you guys where you need to actually put these at. So on your truck, you have three studs. You're only gonna use two of them, of course, because you only have two brackets for each side. If you already had steps on your truck, I had took miles off because I didn't like the look of it. So if you had step, this is exactly where it would be mounted at. So you have one, two, and then three right here on this one. You're gonna use the first set of studs and the third set of studs. They do bring, give you everything you need. So we got the washers and the lock nut. You'll see where it says DF. So that means driver front. So line it up, put it on the stud. Now you get your washer and then your locking nut. Then you need at least a 13 millimeter socket to get it on. And you wanna hand tighten it and then have it to where it's not too tight of course just in case you need to make some adjustments so now we mount the rear driver side line it up so washer and then your locking nut All right, and so that's pretty much it for the driver's side for now, at least for now. Now we gotta move on to the passenger side and it's really the same as that process. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this part done and then we can move forward to doing the actual wiring process. So, cause I don't know if I mentioned, these do have a light up sequence. So it got a rock light feature. So the side of the step, it lights up and then you got the turning lights or the sequential lights and switch bats and all of that on there. So it has all that feature as well. So you can opt it to however way you want to do it. So I went with the rock light option and I went with the, I believe it was a switch back. I think, I can't remember. Since now we're dealing with wiring. Now you want to disconnect your battery. So this part right here is the wiring control harness connected. This part right here is what you um, connect to the actual control harness, which is this right here, I believe. Yeah, so it's this, so. And they got these labeled on here on each side. It says passenger side or driver side. So they have these labeled, so that's a good thing. So they kind of really already ahead of the game, helping you out here. So then you have some that's right here. Your way, obviously you have these connected to the battery, the negative term terminal and everything. Then you have your fuse as well. So what we want to do, we pretty much want to just go ahead and take these clips off so we can put the wiring down the fender line. So we got a clip right here, then another one up here somewhere. We already removed the pin to clamp in the fender well. So now we'll go ahead and put this into the, down through the fender line itself. It's labeled passenger side, so we're going to start there. We're going to pull that down through there and then move to the driver's side and do the same thing. So 
So now all you're doing is just connecting these two pieces right here. You're gonna do the same thing to the driver's side. So then you wanna go ahead and connect your power connector, your wiring connector to the actual adapter here. So now you're gonna use the positive uh, terminal right here and connect it to the battery. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so we're back with another day. So like I told you, I was running out of daylight. Didn't really want to work on it at night. So got up early this morning. We're about to get, go ahead and get started. So really all I have to do is one side of wiring and then clean it up, then put the boards on, clean up the wires. What you do on one side, you do on the other. So I kind of did hardwired everything into the headlight assembly last night before I shut off. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that on the other side. It's pretty much the same process. So today I, I did not plan to be doing this on my birthday, but hey, it is what it is. I kind of got started late. Let's go ahead and knock this out, man, so we can get done with it. So one thing I realized I forgot to do was run this cable down the side on the passenger side of the um, fender well. So I'm about to run that down and then I can get to the driver's side and do everything I need to do on that side. This cable here is what you're gonna end up using to connect to your, it's a part that I already attached to my headlight assembly. So you're gonna connect this to that. And then this right here, this white pass-through cable, you're gonna pass it through to connect it to the other side, to the driver's side basically. So, but I'm gonna clean all that up. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run it down the fender line and then bring it up through and have it come up through here. So this piece right here is what's connected to the headlight assembly. You see it's got the T-taps in there. so. I had a tea tapping and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that when I get to the driver's side, but this is what the part I was just talking about, you're gonna connect it to. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run it down through here and it's gonna go right on the fender liner and it's gonna connect right to it. All right, so as I mentioned, like on the last side, so you got these pins and these screws you gotta take out here, here, then you got a pin up top here that you wanna take loose and then one over here. And then it, honestly, if you wanna make it easier, if you want to make it easier, I would go ahead and just drop this whole thing just like how I did what I did with my rock lights. It'll be a little bit easier if you do it that way. Or at least just loosen it up, you ain't got to drop it all the way. Because the driver's side, you got these parts here that you got to not loose, just to drop it down. So I would just loosen it up and then run it through that side and then back down. Because then you got to run this piece through the actual firewall. So that's... We're gonna do that last. I'm gonna do the, say that part for last. I'm gonna wire up everything else first. Yeah, this is the piece I'm talking about right here that you that you have to run through the firewall. And if you have the rock light assembly, so my situation is gonna be a little bit different. So I'm gonna do that last, and I'll show you guys that after I connect this, run this through the firewall. I already have like a control module, so I don't need to switch. Now I didn't think about that when I told them everything I need, so I don't have to drill into my dash. That piece right there, that brown piece, is where you're gonna connect, connect to try and tap into. So you're gonna use your T taps and all of that to con like to tap into it. All right, so now you have these pieces. So this red and yellow one, you're gonna tap into uh, pin three. And then this one, you're gonna do the second one. So 
use the red and yellow one to tap into pin three and then the blue one to the middle one so you do have a white one right here this is what you'll use for your rock lights so we'll get into that later so this is the part where we use this piece our pink our other connector right here and connect it right to this right here so we'll do that and then we'll pass the the pass through piece with the white tip we'll pass that through up top and connect it that way these pieces right here what i'm talking about then you will connect this to the battery get you a clothes hanger and that way it'll be a lot easier i should have did this earlier but i'm doing it today so i can move a little faster so get your clothes hanger then you can pull it on through to wherever you need it to go all right so this piece right here is what you're going to end up connecting together and this right here obviously you take this to the battery so this piece right here is what we're going to run through the firewall so we're going to do that real quick and you can see it's kind of it's labeled on each side i don't know if you're able to see that each side is labeled got light high and low on each side i might get a clear shot of that later so the yellow and red is the low and then the white and red is the high so to go through the firewall i need to go through this piece right here down into here i don't know if you guys are able to see that but so after a very long time we finally got this damn thing through the firewall so i'll tell you guys exactly how i did it i think i already explained it pretty much just cut the zip tie push it through there and run the clothes hanger or your piece of metal whatever you're using through the firewall and what i'm saying is basically instead of doing like most people what they do is cut a hole through the firewall just cut the zip tie that's right there and push it through there and then obviously you're gonna zip tie it back up tight that's probably the best way to do it and it keeps you from putting a hole in your firewall then you do the same thing on the inside so pulling this through now there we go. got my wire so here's my wire got that running through so this point right here you're either gonna have a standalone obd2 port or you're gonna have a module so in my 2017 i have a standalone so we're gonna tap into the back of this so i'm gonna unbolt this and then i'm gonna tap into the back of it. so i'm using a eight mil in the video it says a seven mil but seven mil didn't fit for me so we're gonna loosen this up We're gonna tap into 20, pin 20. So if you look at the top, if you look at the numbers, it say 14 on the right, and then on the left, it say 24. So this will be for signal high. For this, you'll use uh, one of these. So these are one of your T-taps. And what you'll do is you'll use the wider end to tap into it. Use the high signal, which is the white and red signal. And then we're gonna place it right in our tap. So now we tap the high, now let's tap the low. So now we're doing pin 19. So that'll be the one that's over. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this piece. Take the wire off and go ahead and clamp this piece. All right, now that that's clamped down, and put our OBD2 port back up. What I wanna do is make sure everything nice and sealed and tight. All right. So now we're about to move on to the rock light part. This is where I say it gets a little tricky for me. Well, not necessarily tricky, but it's a little different for me compared to some of you guys. So that's where you connect the rock lights. So in here, you connect it to this on each side, so it's going to the headlight assembly. So this is where it's different for me. So whenever I install my rock lights, instead of me doing the running a switch through the firewall and everything, I have this control module right here. I have a remote inside the truck where I can turn on my rock lights from here. So I don't have to run any wires through the firewall. So everything is outside. So it's not through the firewall. Everything is pretty much in the engine bay, under the truck and through the fender line. And that's how I'm about to do this as well. So I'm gonna run one wire from this side of the truck 
from this side of the truck all the way over here, connect it to this one, and then connect it in here. And then I can connect everything, then put the boards on, and then that'll be it. Now we have our piece here. I don't think I need to strip a little bit, but I'm gonna strip just a tad bit. All right, so you're gonna connect it into this piece right here. All right, clamp it down. If you got a heat gun, use a heat gun. I don't have a heat gun, so I'm gonna use a lighter. So this wire right here was one of the wire that connected to the headlight assembly, but also connected to the module controller. I ran it up under the firewall, and now we're about to connect it to this piece, and then that'll be it. And then we can put the boards on, so it'll go into right here. These are the two pieces that I need to connect right here. Got that loose. And so obviously you can tell by the fit which one fits where. Just look at which one is bigger, which one is smaller. So connect this one into here. Then this one into this one. And I almost forgot. Connect these and then we can connect the battery and then we can try and make the board come down. All right, so these are our running boards. So to make sure you got it on the right side, they got the boost auto gonna be obviously facing the correct side. So this side will go on the driver's side and then the other one will go on the passenger side. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna open the door and align everything. But before we do that, we're gonna slide the screws and stuff on the back. That way we can screw everything on and go from there. So now we're gonna put these bolts right here, slide them on in like I got one right here. Try to slide them somewhere similar to where it'll be where you get ready to bolt it on. And you need a total of four. All right, so they give you these spacers right here. You could put on the top. If you didn't elect for the step pad, had I known that, I probably would've went ahead and got the step pad. But uh, they give you these to go ahead and put on there just to get for like proper alignment. So just stick that on there, get on here let down the open the door so this will let down on the driver's side all right same thing now we'll take our boards and then put it on then we'll secure it once we properly align it we'll secure it on there with the lock nuts try not to do it too tight because you want to be able to adjust it just a little bit Now what we'll do, we'll push our board back as far as they can go. Now we go ahead and close the door. That's it. Since we push it back, help it up just a little bit. All right. And now we'll adjust it to our liking. Yeah, I think I like it about right here. So now you just tighten down on your, on your hardware and you should be good. So now we plug these wires into right here, this side piece right here. All right, got that piece in there and we good. Now let's see how they deploy. All right, now we can go ahead and tighten everything down. Remember we gotta tighten up our bracket and then that's pretty much it on this side. You go do the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, 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 this right here, this right here, this so far, far. Man, listen, it looks so good, man. Look. The startup sequence is crazy good. And it's like hella bright, bro. Like it, it does it no justice. Pretty simple and fairly easy install. The LumaStep M2s actually do have a rock light feature. So you can use this part as strictly rock light so that stay on the whole time but as you saw they do got the startup sequence so this is also a switchback setup as well so the rock light part is very very unique and i have mine running through a it's kind of like a switch box so these there it is right here and it can stay on this whole time 
and the way I have it wired as well. So if I wanted to run it through the daylight, I just press the button. But the way it's wired it is running whenever my headlights on. So these automatically stay on as well. So that's the real cool point about it. So, and it's real bright, man. Look, hey. <laughs> Look at it. So yeah. So this is what the turning sitting on. Same thing. Let's see how it goes with both. Like man, that's this is so dope, bro. <laughs> so like these steps are like <laughs> this definitely might be one of my favorite things about the truck so far. Adding these is like the icing on the cake. Yeah, so go check out Boost Auto Parts, get you a set of these Luma Step M2s. Use the link in the description. And um, man, again, want to give a special thanks to those guys for hooking me up with a set of these M2s. They are phenomenal. I love the way, the, I love the look that it brought to the truck. And yeah, so that's going to end today's video and catch you guys on the next one. Get out of here.